Our destination was Shishabo Mayor City Blob Fiction. It's Shishabo City, a fictional city. I remember Googling there at one point and the only results I got was for Higurashi. So it might be a fictional city or it could be a real city, but I'm, I'm kind of gonna just assume probably, possibly fictional. An area under the control of the Onikafuchi defense lines. The yeah, police station was right on the front lines. Higurashi, when they cry. Well, they have yet to cry in this arc, haven't they? He hasn't arrived yet! Okinima Blab Effects, Ogma Police Station. You know, I'm, I'm just gonna guess that the first character that he's underneath that actually has a portrait is probably gonna be Oishi, isn't it? I mean, it's just like. It's been like maybe. Like combined with the previous part, well, technically it wouldn't be an hour really, because the previous part was more of me rambling than anything else. But it's quite a considerable amount of time before we've seen any character portraits. Kishibana City was, as far as the whole cities went for all over behind the times. Nakamura assessed in the mountains was even more remote. With little change between the seasons, all that was left was the tepid passage of time, made for a rather drab town. There were no tourist attractions or local delicacies. There even a strong regional industry, it was simply dull. Just looking at the monotonous and peaceful townscape, it was hard to catch a glimpse of the radical resistance to the Onikafuchi defense lines. The atmosphere of boredom didn't hint of the Okinawa police station being on the front lines of the dam conflict nor of the numerous incidents that I heard about at the professional headquarters. Good morning, are you here to pay a fine? No, I have an appointment with Moradai san from the Public Safety Division. Please tell me it's Sangasaka. Ah, my apologies, please wait a minute. The clerk who had thought that I was here for a parking violation at first glance, after fumbling with the unfamiliar extension number, Told the person on the line they had a visitor. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Agasaga-san, was it? It must have been tiring traveling out all this way. Sorry we had to uh, do this uh, here. I tried to reserve a reception room, you see. But the uh, counselor suddenly woke up and chased me out. <laughs> I was hosted to call where we were a conference room as it was very small and clustered. The cramped space was packed with lockers. I had the impression that it was more of a change room that doubled as one for smoking. Listening to the screwed chortles, I didn't get much of a feeling that Mordedai, who was head of the local public safety division, was much of an intellectual. But I knew that in exchange he had both experience and actual confidence in his instincts. I apologize for interrupting you during such a busy time. I'm Akasaka from the Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, pleased to make your acquaintance. What did I from the Public Safety Division? Nice to meet ya. I was threatened by Sankai from the Rexual Gangbusters to be generous in my cooperation. <laughs> Gangbusters? You mean the Perpetual Crime Prevention Division? You see, we're treating the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance as an extension of the local Yakuza. You'd have to be a newbie if you think they're just a residential protest group. <laughs> they said that the prefectural office to that the Onika Pichu defense lines was linked to the local mob. If I recall correctly, they had up, uh, up its son of somebody influential was a lieutenant in that camp. That confirms who's speaking then, doesn't it? It's the other way around, the complete opposite. The Yakuza put up the protest group as a front to just like that. Just finger like that. Completely the other way around. <laughs> but I was just about rolling with laughter. This was slightly different from the info given to me at the Quebecco office, but somebody embedded locally would be more knowledgeable. While we were talking occasionally, some people who seemed to be detectives would come in and change. And those individuals noticing monetized. You first came up to us. 
it's. Yep. I was wondering what you guys were talking about. <laughs> ah, Kuro Achan, perfect timing. Why don't you join us? This here is Inspector Akazaku, who came all the way from the Tokyo Police Department. Our Inspector, I'm still a rookie. My name. Oh, wait, no. Why would I even think that was gonna be Oishi? Oishi is anything but a rookie. An Inspector. I'm still a rookie. My name is Zakasaga. Pleased to meet you. What is this music? I think that's the first time we've heard it. It'd be nice to. Uh, it must be nice to be so fresh faced. Did they hire you this year? <laughs> I couldn't help but think I was being ridiculed, so I only responded with a full smile. I could tell that this new person was like Morodai, the type who had confidence in their instincts and experience. I really didn't, I didn't really like uh, this type of people. Let oh, yeah, me introduce you, Akasaka san This is Oishi Kun from our investigative department. I got in the ass file you were asking about, it. he's familiar with it. I think this voice might suit that character. S file. S for Sonizaki. If someone is an S file, it means it has something to do with the Sonizaki family. It's something of a code name. Sonizaki. Come to think of it, I remembered when I was pouring over the documents at headquarters. There were quite a few people with the last name Sonizaki popular. If I remember right, this is Sonizaki who is one of the executives of the Yonika Fuji Defense Alliance. I'm pretty sure they're their treasurer. The two of them were surprised when I rattled off what post that Sonizaki held. After a moment, both of them erupted into laughter. Akazaka's sign, was it? <laughs> you are quite a studious one. Could it be you had memorized all the central figures in the alliance? <laughs> I wouldn't say memorize exactly, but I've at least read the list of Monica Fuji defense lines in the accidents. <laughs> then who are the president and vice president? The president is the mayor of Hidibizawa K. Kimiyoshi. The Vice President is the priest of the local shrine, Rune. Treasurer is O, so is that Kimi. Auditor is Makina. The Eliason is Waikan. Ah, uh, Kimiyoshi. The PR head is Y, so is that Kimi. Ha ha! Like son, you're pretty good. The uh, pay sucks, but you want to work here. You're just the type we're looking for. Ha <laughs> By the way, Yoshio Sonazaki is head of the youth department. So close to head of public relations, exactly. Dariyoshi Sonazaki. <laughs> Feeling like I wasn't being complimented at all, I started settling into an uncomfortable mood. However, I was becoming more and more aware that I was the weakest link in this investigation, so I just had to bear with it. I didn't mean for that feeling to show up on my face, but the crafty detectives didn't let that slip by. <laughs> I didn't mean to make fun of you. To make up for it, why don't I show you around the village? For somebody with no feel for the area like me, it would be a great help. I couldn't have asked for uh, more. Okay, who's speaking now? In the end, the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance is nothing more than uh, an alias in Mizawa is using to deal with the outside world. I've been getting to know the village would speed up your work. How about it? Residential movement, in other words, held influence of the whole region. So the leader of the movement was the leader of that influence. Just like that, the thought processes in the region would become the overall personality of the movement. Just like Oishi had said, in order to learn what they were really like, as this regional force behind the dam protests, the little village was the quickest way. If you would. Back when skipping the beat, Oishi left in satisfaction and stood. Before I took the information I learned at a prefectural office and from Budadai to the Harpers, if my position was exposed, my personal safety was at risk. The opponent was an extremist group that had no qualms about using threats or violence against somebody. If my personal info was leaked, it wouldn't be hard to imagine that I'd be in danger. Job. Thinking that I felt a little nervous. 
These guys are quick to remember faces. If you're seen with me, they'll probably do a lot to hinder you. This might be a little cliche, but put these on. She had me an incredibly suspicious disguise, comprised of a baseball cap, sunglasses, and a mask. I didn't want to get all hot and stuffy, but the way she's wanting was probably right on the money. Considering that, I put them on with precision. You know what? I'm picturing, like... What, what kind of mask is he gonna wear? Is it gonna be one of those kind of, like, ones you put over your mouth and nose? Probably. I didn't want to get all hung up at an appreciation I looked so suspiciously that, uh, I wish she had to smile right on. How much did I tell you again? Let's see. So the part where you were talking about how those three ancient families could run a village. And it got future defense lines was the same as the village of enemies are itself. I mean, there was a direct correlation between being an executive in the alliance and being the leader of the village. This mortal die had told me a short time ago. The village was ruled by three ancient families. Then it would mean the Onika Future Defense Alliance was ruled by those same three families. Can't tell who's speaking. Okay, that's all we What did the documents of the Vectral Office say? About the leader of the Defense Alliance of the Weapons. The documents I was using were classified. To respond to each question, it'd be a breach of security. However, most likely, this man, I judge, was more well-versed in the situation than any of the documents at the Prefectural Police Department. So I decided to answer him. That the President of the Alliance is the current mayor of the village, Jiro Kimiyoshi. Kimiyoshi, upon hearing that, let out a small chuckle. For him to ask like that, and uh, act like that, and to laugh at the answer as it was recorded in documents, meant that wasn't the case in reality. So uh, that means there's somebody else other than in the ocean behind the scenes. Contrary to what the Prefectural Office thinks, or rather, what is commonly known. <laughs> Old man Kimiyoshi is nothing more than a figure. In the first place, the post of mayor in that village is nothing more than ceremony. In other words, there's something else in charge of both the Alliance and the village. Would that be the three families we just talked about? Well, I'll explain that part right now. <laughs> All of a sudden, we'll be funk the car suddenly lurched. The paved road had given way to a gravel one. At the same time, the scenery outside the window changed. The bizarre dam project must be withdrawn. Well, we've thrown their shameless puppet of their guy. No, wait. That's probably a citizen. The bizarre dam project must be withdrawn. I've thrown a shameless puppet of a governor. The dam will submerge the natural beauty of Hinami's arm. Crushes the village from the unethical dam. Attack them in. Where the wrath of oil shows up its curse. Demolish the dam. Those involved must go away. The construction of the office must respond. The office manager Blav must negotiate with us. Signs and banners crowded the roadside. Even reading the brush scrolled words was daunting. It was as though where the road just changed was a border with a different country. At that moment I was startled by the car suddenly breaking. Looking ahead, the barricades had been erected. About five or six protesters wearing masks and helmets to hide their faces were blocking the road, yelling at us angrily to stop. What is this? A checkpoint? Hmm, these guys never learn. She snorted as he rolled down the window and leaned out. Hey, 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 you guys. You can't be blocking the road like this here. As we should glad that them were a malicious laugh, they visibly faltered. Clear the way. We can't get by like this. <laughs> Who would have thought it was the witch's car? That panicked. Or it seemed to make them lose their presence of mind. Ah, if we know it was your car, Detective. Uh, uh, wait, no. Uh, ah, if we had known it was your car, Detective Luigi, we wouldn't have been so rude. Uh, Detective, what happened to your usual car? Is it for maintenance? Something like that. I just can't get used to this car they loaned me. 
Judging from their brief conversation, I could guess that they were familiar with the uh, license plate of the car we should normally use. In other words, if they knew the car belonged to the police, they would have hidden the barricade. What they were doing was obviously obstruction of traffic, a blatant crime. Who is that suspicious guy? You could uh, you can you show your face? Show us your face. The man glared at me menacingly wearing a mask and sunglasses made me look particularly dubious. Would not showing my face get me into some unnecessary trouble? I turned to Ishii to see what I should do. Give him a break. He's still a shy little rookie. Ha <laughs> Yes, one makes sure he wasn't any way suspicious. I think he's always been in a bit of a stir as of late. <laughs> Have you looked at yourselves in the mirror? That mask you're wearing is more, way more suspicious. <laughs> the men in a wish you continue to talk like that, feigning smiles at one another. Forever from the beginning to the end, I couldn't get over the feeling I was sitting on a power gag. Powder gag. As the number of, tru as the number of trucks illegally dumping still not decreased, it's a real hassle dealing with it all the time. If the police could understand and cooperate, it would really help. <laughs> During that conversation, the barricade was moved, leaving a gap wide enough for a single car to get through. We should likely honk the horn once and began to roll the car forward. I could see the men's antagonistic glares at the back of the car in the rearview mirror. If he did go in alone without Ovi, he'd be screwed, really, wouldn't he? He wouldn't be able to get in. What was that just now? Walking a public road like that? Of course it's a crime. Still, if you get worked up over that, it'll never end. <laughs> Those guys say you claim there's an infestation of trucks illegally dumping in the village. The story goes that in order to stop that, they're holding suspicious vehicles for inspection. Illegal dumping? Like corrupt contractors just tossing industrial waste away? The line of argument is that if police aren't going to do anything about it, they'll take matters into their own hands. Well, the industrial waste is just something they're doing by themselves anyway. By themselves? They have a pretty good strategy. You see, in order to hinder construction, they spread into the industrial waste over by the dam sites. Then blaming it on corrupt, uh, corrupt contractors, they start in, 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 in these inspectors. Then they, stop it, then they stop every construction vehicle coming through and interfere with them as much as possible. <laughs> So then, it's one of the methods of the Onikafuchi Defense Alliance is using. Of their inspection just now, this car's license plate has probably been recorded. It shouldn't get stopped from here on out. Those guys know very well not to get me angry. <laughs> See, rumor is that if they figure a car is related to the construction in some way, not only would they be checkpoint stepping in and stepping it at every turn, stopping it. But they'd be throwing rocks and planting uh, road spikes as well. It's best you be careful so you're not identified. If they find out you're from the public safety, who knows what you'll suffer from. <laughs> Wish you was acting like we were talking about something fun, but for me it was no laughing matter. Almost feels like we've wandered into a civil war in the Middle East. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. It's pretty much just what you said. She turned to me with a grin and menacing laugh. See, this here is a war zone. The car slowed down a bit as it went down a narrow road through some farmland. You see that house in that forest over there? That, uh, ant a little antiquated one. Looking at where she was pointing, there certainly was an old traditionally designed house. That belongs to the mayor, old man Kimiyoshi. But that one right there. Looks pretty small. You could say it belongs to the main Kimiyoshi house as well. There's a lot of branches, but they'd be one of the three families. The three families. The ancient families are controlling the tower. That's right. And one of the others is the Brude family. Their house doesn't even have a single branch, as all that's left is the head priest family. Right over there. There's the shrine. He's the priest there. By the way, the Defense Alliance office is on the grounds of that shrine. The office of the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. 
If these guys were the enemy, that would make the shrine their stronghold. Can we go look over there? The shrine is the Freddy family private property, you see. Being police, we can't set foot there without a warrant. See, they've got a member of the Diet with ties to the village bashing them up. Basically, being the police has its strengths and weaknesses. Well, even when we talk about the free families, that's something from a long time ago. Way back when those free families used to hold councils and decide things about the village. Meaning, it's different now. You've got a pretty good nose. That's what I expect from an academic. <laughs> the car breaks to a halt with a squeal. Ahead of where we were uh, stopped were several signs. Private property beyond no trespassing. Beware of poisonous snakes. Danger, turn back. Intruders will be charged an entry fee of... Holy shit, is that a million yen? Or is it... Yeah, I think it's a million yen. Signs were erected. There were things like that written on them. Or maybe it was a million, I don't know. I'm crap when it comes to too many numbers. I prefer it when it's written out. When it's like really big numbers. The road was separated from the forest by a chain link fence wrapped in barbed wire. Since this is private property, this is as far as we go. There's several surveillance cameras set up for the region. This is, uh. I think this is the Sonazaki family residence, isn't it? So, yeah, you can't go any further than that. See, not we just get lost won't work with these guys. They're beyond here, right? The police currently controlling Hinemizawa and the Yonokafuchi defense lines were now to the Kimiyoshi family, nor the Fruity family, but the last of the three. Yeah, beyond here is one of the three families, the Sonazaki family. They're the ones controlling the Hinemizawa from the shadows. Among the list of executives recorded in the documents, the number of people with last names from the FIFA families was quite huge, quite high. Of course, Sonazaki was no exception. The relative at the top was the Kimiyoshi family. The Kimiyoshi family seemed to be in charge. The rules behind the scenes were the Sonazaki family. The double layered structure in Plicity told me that this village had both a light and a dark side. The current head of the Sonazaki family is an old lady named Oreo. Oreo. She has enough clout that you could call her Empress Sonazaki. Be careful, she's no small fry. She's enough of a VIP that even the mayor of the city has to bow for her. Well, in Himizawa and the surrounding area, their relatives amount to a block of several thousand votes. No politician could show this respect for that. <laughs> in other words, that would make her the actual leader of the Onikafuchi defense alliance, right? You've got it. In those words, Oishi pulled out a well-worn cigarette box. Suspected kidnapped and the minister's grandchild and subsequent threats. Were these part of the, the hidden plot by the Onika Future Defense Alliance in order to have the enemy's out dam project cancelled? You came all the way from Tokyo to investigate this, didn't you? Huh? Uh, yeah. That's right. Something the matter? Ah, then. Is it related to that direct appeal instant with Minister Inagai? If that's the case, then public safety has then marked on a watch list. Something like that. <laughs> Haven't you guessed that so quickly makes this easy? We're sailing out here while I exhaled out uh, cigarette smoke. Goishi smiled broadly like I just pulled a good one on him. Or oh, so I thought, he smiled his beard suddenly. No, it didn't. He's still smiling. That's a lie, isn't it? <laughs> it always comes back to that, doesn't it? <laughs> Even a wish is like, that's a lie. Huh? I mean, the direct appeal putting them on a watch list. That's a lie, isn't it? We she knew there was no way that Tokyo HQ would dispatch an investigator over something as minor as a direct appeal. If they were to dispatch someone, it had to be for a more dire reason. He had figured out as much. I put myself as a type of person who doesn't let things show on their face. In front of his watchful gaze, however, I felt that I was think what I was thinking must be laid bare. 
which is silently lit another cigarette as if waiting for me to interject her in this awkward pause. I see, so this was a veteran detective's way of getting some of the spill information. But as long as I realized this, there would be nothing more. If I didn't open my mouth, I wouldn't have to lose anything. All I had to do was store out, stare out the window and enjoy the scenery until Oishi gave up. <laughs> you really are bad at hiding things, you know. Being so young and earnest isn't so bad. Where she smirked as he twisted out his third cigarette while I tried not to let him. Notice that I had yielded completely. At first I thought I had won, but at the very least I wish he had ascertained that I had was hiding something. Meaning that I might have ended up from marching to his tomb. Oishi started up the engine once again and began to move the car. If you just be honest with me, I thought I might have been able to help you. How would you help? If the cat was out of the bag, I might as well use the cat some mice. Well, this depends on what we're talking about. But I might be able to set you up with someone who is knowledgeable about the going on in Mizawa. An informant? <laughs> I see, is that what you got? Why are you interested in my case, which is that? Well, I'm the same as you. Isn't it our business to know things? Being able to meet Fukuishi's informant was an extremely compelling opportunity. We were looking to recruit somebody familiar with the area to collaborate for our intelligence. In the end, there was no better method for finding people than asking. We were always taught, however, that the rank and file police were no better than monkeys. And like us, they were careless with confidential cases. We looked down on them like they'd run their mouth off in a drunken slipper. Wish he was an outlaw even amongst them. And here I was lost on whether or not I should tell him about the kidnapping of the minister's grandson. This informant, exactly how knowledgeable are they about the Onika future defense lives? <laughs> if you're from public safety, you'd know, wouldn't you? Something like that is something I can't just tell you. Protect your sources, that was the first principle of dealing with confidential information. In that regard, it seemed that I wish she wasn't one of those monkeys. Should I trust him, ask for his help, or not? Well, we don't get choices, Akasaka. It's just that you work for the Fed and I work for the Prefecture. I don't think that our jobs are that different. I think I can be of help. However, I was having had trouble believing that this crafty old man would simply help me, just like he claimed. I find it hard to believe that some of your standing would help me out without strings attached. <laughs> well, it's not like I'm completely without an ulterior motive. I've even got my own theme music sort of going on here now. It's about damn time I've been in all arcs and now I'm finally getting some freaking recognition there. So I recall you guys have space there and uh, your budget allocated to pay informants rights. Something you don't need to submit a receipt for. Just a little bit of that would be the cost of meeting with the informants. In other words, give the compensation earmarked for the informant to you first. Well, it helps that the details of this deal were so clear cut. Ah, so clear cut, I mean. He certainly was something else for being able to brazenly state his ulterior motive like this. Rather than him doing this out of the kindness of his heart, everything was a lot clearer if he was being compensated for this deal. I felt that he was the type of man who was good at these backroom dealings. Oh, minister, misunderstand me, please. It's not me who needs the money. It's the informant, okay? Well, in regards to the payment, I'll be handling the money. <laughs> when do you want it? Right now it'd be good. If you don't have it on you, tomorrow works as well. I pulled out a wallet that was different from my personal one. The price was pretty much fixed depending on what kind of information I was paying for. In this, if, in this case, the payment was up front. Also considering the fact that I didn't know what kind of info I would get, I shouldn't pay too much. And I suggest that I wish he suddenly stretched out his hand and tightly grasped the contents of the wallet. At times like this, it's best you not be so stingy. It's alright, it's alright, it won't go to waste. And, uh, and uh, I won't be stingy. And what kind of information are you looking for? Depending on what you want. Uh, what, uh, what you want? 
what you want, I mean. How we approach this will probably change. I swear you won't spread this information to anybody else. Oh, Sam. I can't swear as much. I'm the same as you. I can't withhold information obtained during the course of my duties. <laughs> I got it, I swear. Nothing here gets said anywhere else. On top of that fact, you, I can pay back what I owe for my for my Bajong debts. In any case, I won't break a promise that involves money. <laughs> See, we're gonna be seeing a lot of Majong. I was still unsure if I should trust him until the very last moment, but in the end, I broke down. Ushi wasn't the type of guy I could trust 100%, but there was no mistake in he had access to underground information networks. In order to accomplish my mission swiftly, I needed his cooperation. I set my resolve. 